We finally made it to the end of Axe Judgment Day, the big Avengers X-Men Eternals crossover nobody asked for from Kieran Gillen. And I must say, the word of the day, Doc, is embarrassing. How did you feel about this comic book? Because everybody at Marvel should be ashamed of themselves. This thing was absolutely pointless. I would say the word of the day on it is irrelevant because when we finish, you know, first forcing you into an event that you didn't really want to read, that nobody was asking for, as you said, finish it off with undoing absolutely everything that occurred inside this primary series and all the tie-ins. The $150 event just to get through this. And by the end, absolutely nothing mattered and nothing happened. Nothing changed about the world, I guess, except the Eternals are no longer immortal now but no one cared about that coming into this doc well they're still immortal the people just know that they one of them dies they punished cersei for it so she's dead and whatever the other one was is now some sort of weird golden god mix with an eternal that nobody gives a fuck about. So there's a bunch of stuff going on around the actual story here that is all filler just so they can charge you $5 for this comic book. It's Nightcrawler and Ajax saying, we bypassed the thingamajigger. We bought them 12 minutes more time. And then we did this. We bought them an extra two hours of time. As the actual story going on within the Celestial itself, the progenitor is Tony Stark, Ajax, Wolverine. Cersei was in there as well. There's a bunch of characters inside the progenitor. I think Jean Grey, for some reason, Mr. Sinister. And they're trying to, I guess, get to the core of the progenitor. They're fighting antibodies and stuff. It's really stupid. Yeah, they're just fighting random globby things that apparently they need to make their way through just to get to the boss fight at the end. And the boss fight is a statue. Is he a statue? I think it was just like this uh, weird being that's apparently driving the progenitor. You think Tony Stark, the engineer, would have figured that out when he put this thing back together? You would think so. It just stands there. They can't see anything happening with it. But they can see what the progenitor sees because that's very convenient for the story. Yes, they could see, I guess, all of the world going on and all of the judgment that's happening and all what the progenitor main body of the giant progenitor is doing and cracking open the earth because... What is the Doc? Yeah, because apparently he didn't think to do this, I don't know, first. You think that would have been the original idea? Now, they have moved the humans off of Earth, apparently into the Eternal Cities. They can fit there, and apparently there were just enough portals everywhere to save everybody. And they get in there, and it's absolutely ridiculous what's going on here. It, it's so stupid. They decide, we can't stop it. You know, it's going to the lube, and there's nothing we can do. Maybe we can bargain with the progenitor, the character that's a god, that has decided to judge the entire Earth not worthy and kill everyone, even though it has judged other characters individually worthy and decided not to kill them. There was nothing in this fucking comic that made sense from a narrative standpoint. So if we're actually trying to follow like a coherent plot, good fucking luck, don't bother. It's, no, it's all it's, just deus ex machina is happening left and right. Yeah, it's it's typical Kieran Gillen. Hey, this would be cool, and this would be cool, and this would be cool, and it doesn't have to make any fucking sense. So they're talking, and it turns out Ajax hits, I believe, Jean Grey with a bow staff or something. It feels like she's done a heel turn. It turns out that they need to talk about what their strategy is. There is no defeating the progenitor, but perhaps they can reason with it. So first we get Jean Grey tell the progenitor, listen, I killed an entire planet of people, and I murdered everyone. But I've been redeemed, and you could be redeemed too. People have a chance. Stop being so mean. And he yeah. thinks about it. It's just, hey, let's try to beat him with the power of friendship. Yeah, that's not going to work. And there's a lot of talk of love and hugs in here. And all those stupid civilians that were introduced earlier in the story are all just doing stuff as this is happening. But Jean Grey reasoning with this god was not enough. Cersei decides she's going to broadcast to the entire world and tells everybody and comes clean that the Eternals aren't immortal, that every time that one of them dies and when they come back, a human has to die. And she says, you should be able to judge us and hopefully you can forgive us. And then maybe this big, enormous God can forgive us as well. I, I am really tired of these fucking like my little pony Care Bears fucking conflict resolution. This is goddamn superhero comics. Fucking shoot something with a laser well, blast or something. 
They never actually defeat this thing. That's the worst part about it. Yeah, that it wasn't enough, Doc. Even though he's reconsidering, the progenitor's like, well, maybe I did mis- make a mistake. And he goes, no, nah, I've gone too far now. I'm still going to kill everybody. So then Tony Stark's like, listen, I'm a raging alcoholic. I'm a terrible person. I've come back and I try to live every day better than the one before it. You should be more like me. I helped create you. What are you thinking? Snap out of it, man. You don't want to kill everybody, do you? And then he's like, huh, I don't think I do want to kill everybody. What was I thinking? It was just this typical, you know, (laughs) hey, get the god to question himself eventually, and then he'll give up and then decide to fucking just merge with this Eternals chick. This whole thing was a complete mess, and the ending is the worst part of all of it because he's like, you know what? I'm not a god. I'm not infallible, but I do have godlike powers. I'm going to take everything I've destroyed and put it exactly the way it was before I got mad at the world and decided to judge it. And it just magically goes back to the way it was. Everybody's come back. If you died, you were resurrected. By the end of this comic, nothing that happened mattered. You just wasted $150 to end at the exact position you started at. Good job to anybody that bought this. Um, How you like getting your money stolen at this point? How did you like the part where the progenitor... Well, at least the little thing inside the progenitor that's actually running him. I guess it's the driver or whatever. He's talking to, I believe, Ajax. He's like, how do you judge me? And then she gave him the thumbs down, Doc. She yeah. said, you failed. And then I think he cried. Yep. It, it, it cr- <laughs> well, suddenly the um, the celestial has <laughs> human eyes I- inside of its like six eye thing they all of a sudden start getting pupils in it and looking like humans so that you could give you sad puppy dog eyes doc it was heartbreaking he got yeah. judged she gave him the thumbs down she was Aww. like simon cow on his ass that was supposed to be an emotional moment it didn't get you in the feel spot no because once again no, of course nobody this in thing this... is an entire joke this is yeah. so bad nobody in this company could write something with emotional weight if their fucking life depended on it especially not kieran fucking gillen Man, I wish we had more time to just talk about all the bad dialogue. There's one specific line of dialogue between Sinister and Wolverine. It was like, that is absolutely not Wolverine. That's soy-based Kieran Gillen, but that is not anything Wolverine would say. It's just riddled with just terrible dialogue. I wanted to puke when I was reading what Nightcrawler was saying to uh, Star Fox and all that stuff and their conversation back and forth. None of these characters felt heroic, which serves a purpose for the story because in the end, The heroes didn't win. They didn't do anything. They did not defeat the bad guy. The bad guy had a change of heart because he felt bad and decided to undo everything. At what point do the heroes in this story ever get to be heroes? Because they're irrelevant to the story other than nagging the bad guy to be better. I don't know, Doc. I don't think this story or this event had anything to do with heroics or superheroes saving the day or anything. I think it was just an excuse to charge people $150 for absolutely nothing. The end state is the exact same as the beginning state. It was an exciting story. We didn't get to see anybody win, but they did dislodge about $150 from people's wallets. I imagine there's quite a few people that still stuck around on this one and wasted a lot of money. I think, I guess that's a job well done from Tom Revort and the team at Marvel Comics. Yep, because the only changes in this were... Status quo changes for two characters that exactly zero people gave a fuck about because the Eternals don't even have a comic book right now. That was absolutely rough getting through. I definitely am reconsidering my idea to stick it through and even review that comic book. It was just so bad. If you want some more thinking critical, this is what YouTube has decided based on what you watch and what I've created is the best video I've ever made specifically for you. If you want some more thinking critical, definitely check this out.